I'm Wes Pittman. I've learned a few things while representing injured people for 30 years. It's your attorney's job to make sure that you're treated fairly and get the compensation you deserve. If you've been hurt in an accident, you may find yourself overwhelmed or intimidated by the process. This DVD will answer questions and help you to make the right decisions. Consider this. Insurance companies have trained their adjusters to make sure they get the largest profits possible for their stockholders. How do they do that? By trying to pay you less than your case is worth. Think about this. Thousands of dollars are collected every year for premiums. In fact, you've probably paid one yourself. The person or company that hurts you has paid a premium for insurance, so you should be compensated fairly. In this DVD, let's discuss the usual processes in a personal injury case, but remember, the facts of every case will change the applicable law. So I'll talk about what happens in an average case. To simplify things, I'll define a few terms for you. Instead of referring to an at-fault person or corporation, I'll say something like the person who hurt you or the defendant. The defendant is insured by an insurance company, which I'll sometimes call the carrier, meaning an insurance carrier, which is the same thing as an insurance company. Or I may call the insurance company an insurer. Whether we call an insurance company a carrier or an insurer, the person who works for that company and who could become your worst nightmare is called an adjuster. Adjusters are highly trained and skilled in collecting evidence against you and your case. They're also highly skilled at evaluating the dollar value of your case and they use their talents to keep what they pay you as low as possible. Remember they work for an insurance company that wants to make the largest profits possible. The way to do that is to pay you less. In this DVD, I'm going to answer some of the most commonly asked questions, and I'll tell you what you can expect in your case. Topics are organized so that you can click on an area of interest and go directly to it, but I suggest that you go through all sections in the order in which they're presented. You don't want to miss something that's important to your success. What are the two most important things to do when you've been hurt? The two most important things are your bodily health and your financial health. First, get the necessary medical care and stay with it. If you don't, the person or company that hurt you will have an immediate defense and will use it against you. Make sure that your first priority is your bodily health. The second priority is then your financial health, which you must secure through a legal claim. Getting legal representation early is critical. Your attorney can find and preserve valuable evidence that is often lost when there's delay. And an attorney can take immediate steps that will make a solid foundation for your case. What is the most important thing not to do? That's easy to answer. Shortly after an injury happens, sometimes even while you're in the hospital under medication, an insurance adjuster is likely to try to call to take your recorded statement. Don't agree to that. It's very dangerous. You aren't obligated to talk to the defendant's insurance adjuster, and you shouldn't. Why? They are trained in techniques to gain your trust. Often a victim will let his guard down, and a simple statement will ruin his case. When you're represented by an attorney, the insurance company is absolutely prohibited from contacting you for any reason. That's why I'm available 24-7 when an accident happens. Some other lawyers are as well. I want to prevent that trained adjuster from calling at a time of confusion, uncertainty, and pain. On the other hand, if you've been hurt and you've already given a statement to the adjuster, don't let it bother you too much. We're trained to deal with that in various ways too. How will my medical bills and lost wages be paid? If you've been in a motor vehicle accident, Florida law requires your own insurance company to pay 80% of your medical bills and 60% of your lost wages from your PIP, also called personal injury protection coverage. Most auto policies have $10,000 of that kind of coverage. The other 20% of your medical bills not paid by PIP coverage will be paid by the medical payments part of your policy, usually having limits of $5,000 and by your health insurance. Whatever isn't paid by them is called your out-of-pocket expense and your attorney will get that back from the defendant's insurer. The same applies to lost wages. 
Whatever isn't paid by PIP coverage will be obtained from the defendant's insurance policy during the course of your legal claim or suit. If you were hurt in some other way, such as by a slip and fall on something that shouldn't have been on the floor of a store, or maybe by a defective product or by medical malpractice, PIP coverage on your auto policy won't pay your bills. Then you'll have to rely on your health insurance to pay the medical bills, and your attorney will collect the medicals that aren't paid for you, like your copay and all of your lost wages from the defendant's insurer. That brings up another thought. What if you've been badly hurt and may not be able to work as much or at all in the future? Your loss of ability to earn money in the future is also compensable, but a complex formula is applied to determine the loss, taking into account inflationary trends and a concept called reduction to present value. Don't worry, your attorney can get those things done for you. The important part of this is that you probably have several insurance coverages in place to handle your medical bills and lost wages. You just need some guidance about which will apply and where to look for them. What if I don't have insurance coverage? How can I get medical care? Any hospital to which you're taken for emergency services after an injury is obligated to provide enough treatment to stabilize your condition, but you'll be billed for the services later. Usually the next question that I'm asked is, how am I going to afford ongoing care? Well, many doctors, diagnostic centers, and outpatient surgery centers will accept a letter of protection from a reputable law firm and will continue to provide medical care to you until your case is settled or until you get a verdict from which you'll be able to then pay your bills as they occur. Your attorney's letter of protection to a health care provider is often your very best ticket to continuing medical care for your injuries. What will the defendant's insurer do about my claim? The insurance company will assign a team of people to your case. That's why it's important not to stand up to them alone. The team will be made up of a claim supervisor, adjusters, and possibly investigators to gather information about you, about how the accident or other method of injury happened, and what it can do to settle your claim for the lowest amount possible. I know I've said this before, but after viewing this DVD, one of the most important things for you to remember is the insurer is in business for one reason only. It's to make money. If it pays you, it has less profit for its stockholders. Their number one objective is to build a case against you. Once they finish their investigation, some standard defenses you can expect, depending on your type of negligence case, are things like pre-existing conditions, failure to mitigate damages, comparative negligence, failure to wear a seat belt if it's an auto case, and various statutory set-offs against your damages. In other words, things you've probably never heard of. Again, that's okay if you're represented because your attorney is trained in ways to avoid or minimize these defenses to get a reasonable value for your case. Why hire an attorney? Can I handle my own case and save a legal fee? Of course you can handle and settle your own case, but if you do, you'll probably be taken serious advantage of by the defendant's carrier and not even know it. One major auto insurance company's training manual for adjusters tells them to act friendly toward accident victims, get their trust, and then settle and get a release signed before the victim hires an attorney. Why? The answer is in the claims manual. It says that on average, if a victim handles his own case, he gets paid only one-third what a victim who's represented by an attorney gets. Only one-third. That's why they don't want you to get an attorney. Of course, despite what I've said, you may decide to go it alone. If you do, in the end, be careful. Very careful, because you're going to have to handle liens and subrogation claims, possibly from hospitals and your health insurance carrier. Don't neglect these things because you can be sued by the parties having the liens or subrogation rights. In the end, it comes down to this. Plumbers should do plumbing. Ships captains should drive ships. And personal injury attorneys should handle injury claims. Everyone has something that he or she does best. And if everyone sticks to that, logically, things come out a lot better. In 30 years, I haven't baked a cake, but in 30 years, I've successfully handled thousands of injury cases. What's the value of my case? 
The value of your case will depend on an incredible number of factors for which information will have to be developed and submitted either to the defendant's insurance company or to a jury, sometimes both. But in general, your damages valuation will center around three things, which we call elements of damage. The usual elements of damages in an injury case are the medical expenses, lost wages and future loss of earning capacity, and the pain and suffering. The pain and suffering element also includes some valuation for scarring, disfigurement, and the inability to enjoy life. That is the loss of ability to do the fun things that you used to do, like fishing, hunting, walking on the beach, or maybe running. If you're married, your spouse also has a claim for her loss of your companionship, the loss of the normal sex life, and the things that you used to do for him or her, such as yard work, home repairs, or washing the car. Your spouse's claim is called a consortium claim, and in some cases it can be complex, but also very valuable. After all the evidence is gathered in your case, it will be possible to estimate its reasonable value. No computer can calculate it, nor is there a crystal ball. I wish there were, because this is the most difficult part of the case, putting the right value on it. Demand too much from the insurance company, and negotiations simply won't happen. Ask for too little, and oh, they'll be glad to pay it, but you'll have left valuable money on the table. Only with experience is it possible to strike the right balance. Is it wrong for me to make a legal claim? I'm sure that other injury attorneys have the same experience with people as I do. At their first visit with me, for which we never charge a fee, many come in a little sheepish and say, I've never sued anyone before, and then they ask if it's okay to do that. Assuming the other person's negligence or carelessness caused your injury, you're perfectly right in making a claim against that person's insurance carrier. You didn't ask to be hurt and to have your life disrupted, maybe forever. And think about this. That person paid his insurer a premium for the policy that's now supposed to pay you for your medical bills, lost wages, and pain and suffering. If you don't take steps to have the insurer compensate you for these losses, that insurance company will have made a windfall profit. It took money in on the defendant's premium, but didn't pay anything out for it. It laughs all the way to the bank. And yes, one more thing, don't worry about the person you're making the claim against. Because in Florida and every other state, except in rare cases, the claim in reality is against the insurance company, not the individual who hurt you. If I get legal representation, how will my attorney be paid? Your attorney will be paid by keeping a percentage of the settlement or court award for your injury. This is called a contingent fee. By law, it is clearly expressed in a contract between you and your attorney. The agreement provides that you will not have to pay for the attorney's services until the case is settled or resolved in your favor by a court verdict. If the case is unsuccessful, obviously there will be no fee to the attorney. The typical fee for the work involved in investigating the case, preparing all the evidence, submitting it in what's called a demand package to the carrier, and negotiating a settlement, including resolving all liens and subrogation claims as I discussed before, is one-third of the settlement. That may sound like a lot, but when it's put into perspective, it's really very reasonable. I'm not fond of what I pay at the grocery store, but I have to remember that the farmers have devoted their time and money to produce those products for me. In an injury case, you also have to look at the benefit usually achieved by having an experienced injury attorney. Remember what I said earlier about the huge auto insurance company's training manuals for adjusters. It says that on average, you'll get paid three times the amount of money for your injuries if you're represented by an attorney compared to those who aren't. Looked at in that light, the contingency fee is a bargain. Because if that average works for you, you'll double the money that goes into your bank account even after paying the attorney. Your personal injury case is very important to you. In the tough times we're in, it's critical for your financial well-being that your case proceed correctly so that your bills will get paid and you'll be fully compensated for your suffering. It's also important that you have a positive attitude throughout your case. The Constitution of the United States, our state laws, and fairness 
dictate that injured victims should be compensated for injuries that are inflicted on them by others. Whether you choose to be represented by an attorney or take your chances by going it alone, this is the law and it is on your side. I'm Wes Pittman and I've been representing injured people for over 30 years. It's what I do best. If you have any questions, you can call me 24-7 at 784-9000. Ask Wes, 784-9000.